Today I'm going to blur the background of a photo. Now this is a really useful technique if you want to highlight a subject or if your photo has an unwanted background that you'd like to disguise. Now this tutorial is ideal for GIMP beginners as it's just a quick guide and only uses a single layer. I'll make another tutorial later on to cover transparencies in multiple layers. So let's get started. Here I've opened a photo that I would like to use as a portrait. So I'm going to blur out the background to make the young man the focal point. Now while I'm not actually going to use multiple layers today, I will make a copy of the photo in the layers panel and then I can easily compare my altered version with the original. To do that, I just click on the Create a Duplicate button at the bottom of the Layers panel and a copy will appear at the top and this is the one that I'll be working on. So to make it easier I'll click on my Zoom tool and zoom him up. Now there are many ways to select the subject but today I'm going to use the Free Select tool. If you don't understand how the Free Select tool works, watch my GIMP Beginner's Guide 3, the Select Tools, and that should help. So I'll click on my Free Select tool, and now I'll click around the subject to select him. Now for the sake of time, this is just a very rough, quick selection. But it should be good enough to show you how to blur the background out. Now to complete the selection and activate the marching ants, I have to click back on my first click spot. And there you have it. The selection is complete and the marching ants are activated. So I'll zoom it back down. And next I'll go to my menu bar and click on the select menu. I come down and click on Feather. I'm going to accept the default size and just click OK. Now feathering creates a blur along the edge of my selection and makes it look more natural. I'll click on the Select menu again and come down and click on Invert. Invert swaps the selection around. Now, instead of the figure being selected, everything else is selected. And to create the blur, I will go to Filters, come down to Blur, slide across and down and click on Gaussian Blur. And in this dialog box, I just check that my chain is linked. And if it isn't, just click on it to link it. And then change the horizontal to 15. And I just click in the vertical and it will also change to 15. Now the higher the number, the greater the blur. So I'll click OK, and there is my blurred portrait. I'll deselect it to stop the marching ants, so I click on Select, come down and click on None, and now the marching ants have stopped. Now as I said, I can always compare it to the original. All I have to do is go to the Layers panel, 
and click on the eye on its layer. And when I do that, the new version will disappear and I'll be able to see the original photograph that's underneath. And then, when I click where the eye was, the new version will reappear and I can easily compare the two. If I decide I want to keep this photo, I click on File, click on Export. Now because I want to keep the original photo, I'll have to give this one a new name. Now I check that it's a JPEG, which is a photo. I check that it's going to my pictures library, which this one is. And then I click on export. And I click on export again. And there is now a copy of this photo in the pictures library of my computer. And I still have the original photo as well. Because I've already saved the photo and I've finished with it, I'm not going to save the project, so I'll click out of it and close without saving. So I hope this helps you enhance your own photos, and if you've got any problems or suggestions, just leave a comment.